Hello and welcome to this video which will explain how in some cases we can have objectives without measures on the balance scorecard. My name is Cam Scully and I will be your host in this video. I'm convinced that if you can master this you can easily understand why objectives without measures make sense sometimes on the balance scorecard. I want to share with you three important facts. First, the balanced scorecard has helped many organizations set and achieve their strategy. Second, the balanced scorecard is demanding with respect for needing quants. And third, and most unfortunate, is the fact that demand on quants makes the balanced scorecard difficult for many organizations. Just to be clear, readily available quants are ideal in a balanced scorecard. After all, it is a scorecard. In reality, though, Getting quantifiable measures can be an issue. They are often unavailable, or sometimes they can be made available, but with excessive effort. Compiling results for regular scoring can easily become a burden with all those quants. Sadly, these realities can often lead to abandonment, either during the scorecard build or because of the work needed during the scoring process. Just to be clear, our preference is always measurable objectives. And in fact, we can always get objectives uh, to measure, but sometimes the cost of doing so is absolutely prohibitive. So we can conclude then that some very good objectives simply cannot be measured, at least from a practical perspective. This need not be a showstopper, however. The key is to adapt the balanced scorecard approach, and in doing so, still get the most out of the benefits while we reduce the time and effort needed in the scorecarding build process. This should also increase the number of balanced scorecard adopters. After all, easier implementation is a good thing. Okay, so let's have a look at what an objective without a measure might look like on the balanced scorecard. Here's an example of the type of objective I'm seeing more and more clients prefer to adopt instill a mindset of constant safety. And in this case, keep in mind that constant safety could be a variety of different things. Quality, for example, creativity. You can see that instead of a clear quantifiable measure, there is a statement in here. Rather than measure this objective, we will take the action as necessary with the intent of observing progress. That, of course, can be wordsmithed as appropriate. The key in terms of communication is that this is part of the objective that will receive special treatment because of the objective itself is an integral part of the strategy. We just can't measure it traditionally. Some other examples of objectives without measures we might see is again instill a mindset of X. As I mentioned, this one could apply to many topics. Transform communication in and across departments is another example. And here's one I'm currently working with a client on, build engineering process discipline. Same idea with this one, encourage problem solving and creativity. These last two objectives you see here are currently in the measures collection phase with clients. The clients may actually have some ideas for quants to go with these, and I'm wide open to that. Uh, measures are almost always possible. Uh, my instincts tell me that determining and collecting measures may be impractical for these objectives and as such I'm prepared to suggest that we use the objectives without measures approach. So what are the key benefits of objectives without measures allowance? One of the key benefits is that it facilitates a more rap rapid balance scorecard build. There will also be less adoption stumbling blocks and we can now go around the brick wall we sometimes hit when we are establishing measures. Another benefit is the reduction of the amount of work involved in assembling results. Simply stated, there are a few less cumbersome measures to tell. And finally, and maybe most importantly, the anecdotal non-quantitative discussion around progress can be richer than the analysis of numerical results. Quants are great, don't get me wrong. Without them, we avoid any risk though of getting caught up in the numbers. We can just talk strategy. I'm going to pay special attention to that point in the future and see just how rich we can make the discussions with clients around results for objectives without measures. By extension of the objectives without measures approach, let me quickly mention measures without targets, or MWOT. 
It is essentially the same idea, just applied one step later. Just as it sounds, measures without targets is aimed at measures that can't be quantified into a numerical target, but merit attention and appraisal nonetheless. Again, keep in mind it's the management discussions and decisions for improvement that can be as rich as any discussions around quants. Here's a quick look at what measures without targets might look like on the balance scorecard. The objective here is to facilitate knowledge exchange and sharing of best and promising practices. As you can see, we have established a measure, which is the number of enrollees for webinars, presentations, knowledge exchange events, and training. This is an example of a very suitable measure. However, the time and effort to actually collect and tally these total numbers every quarter may not be the best or most practical use of any organization's time or effort. It's okay to skip it. Similar to the objectives without measures, instead of a target, we can make a statement like the one you see here. We will assess our progress based on discussions and anecdotal evidence. Specific quants aren't necessary for insightful and valuable discussions. Trading the analytics for anecdotes and examples sometimes just makes sense. Okay, time for a quick recap. And this will always be true. If you can develop a measure with a reasonable amount of effort, you are encouraged to do so as the primary engine of the balanced scorecard is fueled by measures. That said, if you simply can't determine a measure for your most important objectives, then don't. The objective without measures approach, used sparingly, will work for you. The right objective should never be dropped just because a measure can't be developed. Remember that objectives are there in part for visibility and also to spark discussion. Balanced scorecarding isn't just about scoring. Same idea is true for measures without targets. Lack of a numerical target need not compromise the value of the balanced scorecard. The bottom line here, and the key point of this video, is that these concepts, objectives without measures and measures without targets, can allow organizations to reap the benefits of the balanced scorecard, while at the same time avoiding many of the downsides we witness in the building and scoring process. I hope this video has demonstrated that all objectives on the balanced scorecard don't need to have a measure to go with them. The conversations and analysis around scorecard results can be just as valuable sometimes without measures. The same is true for measures without a specific target number. While we absolutely prefer a completely populated balanced scorecard, in some cases it just makes sense to move forward without some measures and targets. If you would like to discuss any part of this, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I'm Cam Squally. Thank you for watching.